Now, I would say that the brand Hoka has probably had the biggest impact on the running shoe industry ever since Nike saw sort of developed the first mass-produced recreational running shoe. And now the brand has become one of the biggest names in the game, developing highly cushioned shoes with deeply stacked rockered midsoles. However, the trail shoe from the brand that we're looking at today is very, very different. So let's tell you guys all about the new exciting Hoka Zinal 2, and then we're gonna be lacing these up and getting out on the stunning Cornish trails. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope everybody is fit and well out there and thanks for joining us for another video. Always an exciting day at the channel when a new shoe arrives and we get to test them out for the first time. And that is exactly what we're gonna be doing today. So the new Hoka Zinal 2 has undergone a massive update this time round and it's pretty much a brand new shoe from the ground up. So let's give you guys a few facts and figures. We're also gonna break down this new construction in a bit more detail. And then I'm gonna be grabbing the GoPros and we're taking them out for their first run. So first up, this is a pretty stripped back shoe, especially for the Hoka brand. So we've got no oversized super soft midsole going on here. And the Zanao 2 is built for speed, running quickly over technical terrain, over shorter distances. And it kind of reminds me of the brilliant Evo jaws that the Hoka brand used to make. I used to love running in this shoe. You felt so dialed in and connected to the ground underfoot. Brilliant at running on technical trails, whether they're wet or dry. And the grip and traction from this outsole was fantastic. Unfortunately, they don't make this model anymore. So I'm clinging on to my old pair, but I think it's seen better days by now. So the Zinal 2 retails in the UK for 160 pounds. And believe it or not, it weighs in at a crazy like 217 grams in a UK 9.5. And that's actually a very similar weight when you compare it to the Merrill Skyfire 2s that we tested out a few weeks ago. I actually think that the Zinal 2 and the Skyfire 2 have probably been designed to do the same job and to give you a very similar running experience. We've got a much lower profile when it comes to that midsole design. When you compare it to a lot of the other trail running shoes in the Hoka lineup, shoes like the Mafati Speed 4 and the Speed Goat 5, you know, those deeply cushioned trail running options and the foam in that midsole is actually a little bit firmer than what we've come to expect from the Hoka brand. So the Zinal 2 is gonna put you closer to the ground, give you more connection to make you feel nice and lightweight, super stable and nimble while you're out on the trails. And it also comes with a five mil heel offset. This time round, Hoka have gone for a complete sort of redesign on the upper of the Zinal 2. So we now get this sort of booty design, one piece upper construction that utilizes this quite stiff sort of crinkly material. Uh, it really does remind me of some of the old fabrics used on the old Hoka Evo models. Uh, we've got this integrated knitted sort of ankle collar, again in there sort of designed to be a gaiter to try and help keep debris out of the shoe. And when I first pulled these on, it really does have a kind of Salomon S Lab vibe to it. And the main reason being is, it was a bit of a struggle to get them on my feet. Now, I've got lots of running shoes with heel tabs on that I never ever use, but I really did need this heel tab to get in the Zinal 2s. And I've got to be honest, without this, I think I'd have struggled to get in them. There's very little padding in the tongue of that upper. In fact, pretty much no padding at all. But Hoka have worked in a little bit of zonal padding around that ankle collar. We got quite a few overlays going on. So wrapping around the heel and those lace eyelets just to give it a bit more substance and durability. And we've also got some internal structuring going on. So wrapping around the midfoot and around the toe box. Along with all the other big changes to the Zinal, we've got a complete redesign of the outsole. I personally think this is a great thing because this is one of the reasons why I wanted to try the new version of the shoe out. Previously, it came with the same sticky rubber compound on the outsole, but it must have had the smallest, shallowest lug I've ever seen on a trail running shoe. And that really put me off trying that original shoe out. Happy to say that this time round, Hoka have gone for this nice chunky five mil traction lug. And that's been paired up with the brilliant Vibram Mega Grip light base rubber. So now the Zinal 2 should offer really good levels of grip and traction on pretty much any surface and in any weather conditions. Whereas the previous shoe must have really struggled with even the slightest bit of mud. 
So there you have it folks, the exciting new Zinao 2 from Hoka, a very different take on a trail running shoe from the brand this time round. And I think it's great to see them offering a more minimal shoe within their trail running lineup because at the end of the day, not everybody wants to run in a deeply cushioned oversized trail running shoe. So I guess we've reached that time when we need to pull them on. And when I say pull them on, I really mean pull them on. And then we're gonna be hitting the beautiful Cornish trails and we're bringing you guys along for the run. Welcome to the beautiful Hale Towers. A little bit overcast today, pretty muggy as well. And we ticked over two miles pretty quickly. And I've got to be honest, I'm pretty surprised because when I tried the shoe on to test the size out, it felt super narrow, maybe a little bit short on length, and very stripped back when it came to the upper. And I really wasn't sure I was going to get on with it, but so far, I'm really surprised with how well it's running. Feels great straight out of the box. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a crazy narrow shoe. You know, it's a race shoe built for speed, very precise on that fit, which is actually working great for my foot shape. But if you didn't need any width or room in the toe box, you're really gonna struggle with this shoe because like I said, it is crazy narrow. The fact that there was no padding in that tongue whatsoever definitely was a concern to me. But like I said, just over two miles in. And actually, those laces feel really comfortable across the top of my foot. They're not rubbing, there's no irritation, which is pretty impressive because there literally is no padding in that tongue. Obviously, early days when it comes to the first run, but like I said, just really surprised. Sometimes you put a shoe on, you just get this feel that it's not right for you. And it's really performing well. So we're gonna continue the run. Hopefully, we're going to get in around seven miles today, like I say, out on the Talons, and let's see if the shoe continues to impress. Massive thanks to everybody who supported the channel, who's put in a pre-order for our new summer edition technical short sleeve tee. The pre-orders are closed now, so we're gonna put that order in. Production time's about three to four weeks. As Soon as we got those tees, we'll be shipping them straight out to you guys. I will have a few for stock afterwards. So if you missed out on the pre-order, hopefully we'll have a few sizes available at runforadventure.uk. <laughs> six miles in and the Zanao 2 continues to impress me. So yes, that midsole on the shoe is definitely a lot lower to the ground, a lot less cushioned than say your regular sort of Hoka Mafati or Speed Goat, but it's still offering me really good levels of comfort and cushioning, even on the compacted trails or even on the sections of road, it's felt very comfortable. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you like a deeply cushioned trail shoe, it's not gonna provide you with that. But if I compare it to that Merrill Skyfire 2, another super strip back racing trail shoe, the Zanao 2's midsole definitely offers me a lot more cushioning, quite a bit more sort of energy return and a lot more underfoot protection. I really did think after trying on at home that, you know, going over those rocky bits, going on sections of tarmac, the shoe was gonna run pretty uncomfortable, but that is just not the case. Uh, it feels really plush underfoot for a stripped back shoe. We've got a good quality insole in the shoe. I think that's really making a big difference, but yeah, it's felt comfortable on 
all the train I've run so far. Okay, so we've got about a mile and a half to go till we get back to the studio. So let's get back there safe and sound, and then we're gonna break down the performance of the Zinal 2 out on its first run in a bit more detail. We'll see you back there, guys. Wow, that really was a muggy run out there today. It was hot and I definitely worked up a sweat. It really feels like we need a, a big thunderstorm down here in uh, Cornwall to sort of clear the air a bit. Now, I know I mentioned it several times out on the run, but that really was one of the most surprising first runs I've had in a new running shoe because I wasn't really expecting a lot from the Zinal 2, but the shoe definitely delivered. Hoka seemed to be really good at producing lightweight foam cushioning that offers a nice level of comfort while giving you good levels of energy return. And that's exactly what they've done in the midsole of these. And like I said, it really does remind me of running in the fantastic Evo jaws that Hoka used to make. And if anything, I think that midsole performed a little bit better out there on today's run. It seemed to give me a little bit more underfoot protection in the rocky areas than the jaws used to give me. So if like me, you used to love running in the Evo jaws, I think you'd really get on with the Zinal 2 as well. Obviously with a five mil lug Vibra Mega Grip light based outsole, uh, it's definitely gonna perform well when it comes to grip and traction. Incredibly dry down here in Cornwall at the moment, so no mud to test out those lugs. But we did have a lot of soft sand and those traction lugs seem to dig in really well and offer me lots of traction. Obviously, if you have run with a trail shoe with Vibra Mega Grip rubber on the outsole, then we don't really need to test it out when it comes to running on rocky or wet rocky areas because we all know this is a super sticky, excellent performing rubber compound. And last but not least, another big surprise was how well this new sort of booty designed upper performed. I'm not normally a lover of a super strip back upper. I tend to like, a, you know, a moderate level of padding across that tongue and around that ankle collar. And the Zinal 2 is definitely lacking in both of those departments. But that new upper actually performed really well and felt nice and comfortable out on today's run. With the shoe having this new booty design, uh, once I'd forced my foot into it, it did feel very secure and the fit was very precise wrapping around my foot. It was pretty much like having a sock on your foot with a midsole and outsole attached. Even though there's not a lot of structure in the back end of that shoe, I can fold the heel down into it, very, very soft. I still felt very secure in that heel. But the biggest surprise of all was the fact that those laces worked across the top of my foot, felt very comfortable, even though there is a lack of padding in that tongue. So they didn't dig in, I had no problems and no irritation. That elasticated knitted ankle collar seemed to work really well. I got no grit or debris inside the upper. And I've had other trail shoes in the past with very similar upper designs to this. Uh, Salomon's Pulsar Trail Pro uh, gave you a very similar booty construction, but I really didn't get on with that upper. Uh, I could really notice the laces and the lace eyelets digging into the top of my foot, and it actually ran pretty uncomfortable to the point where I couldn't wear it for any longer efforts. That is definitely not happening in the Zinal 2. And like I said, I could hardly feel those laces on, on the top of my foot. Word of warning guys again, this is a super narrow fitting trail running shoe. Like a race day shoe should be, I haven't got a wide foot, fits my foot like a glove. If you've got a bit of width to your foot shape or you like a fair bit of sort of width and volume in the toe box, then I dare say the uh, Zinal 2 from Hoka isn't gonna be the shoe for you. If you've recently watched my video featuring my top three trail running shoes of the year so far, you'll know that the brilliant New Balance Fuel Cell Summit Unknown V4s Whew, what a mouthful, took my second place. And that's a slightly more minimal sort of trail shoe offering. And I would say that the Zinal 2 actually performed just as good as that shoe out there on today's first run. So really excited to lace these up maybe for a 10K trail race down here in Cornwall and push really hard in the shoe on technical terrain. So there it is folks, our first impressions on the new Hoka Zinal 2. And what a pleasant first run it was. Obviously, I'm gonna be getting a lot more miles in these, including a longer run, hopefully, and then we'll be back with our full in-depth review on this stripped back, go faster trail running shoe from Hoka. Uh, really hope you enjoyed the video. Really hope you found it helpful. If you did, guys, you know what to do. 
hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Only takes a second to do by clicking on that little red subscribe box down there in the corner. And it is completely free, but a massive help. But until next time, folks, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. It is really appreciated. We'll be back here very, very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. Wow, that really was a muggy run out to the out <laughs> Not everybody wants to run in a deeply cushioned, high stacked trail running shoe. So I guess it's time. <clears throat> so there you have it folks, the new exciting Zinao 2 from Hoka. Uh... <laughs>